Hello, we are back again and this is the last episode, the fourth one of a series on graphic organizers. I'm combining three last graphic organizers in this one. We've done three independent episodes on the Venn diagram, the fishbone diagram, as well as the timeline. The other three are probably used more often by all of us as teachers and therefore I thought I'll just do one example of each to conclude our series on graphic organizers. We've been talking about why graphic organizers because the brain learns through images and pictures. We have also said that these are the six top graphic organizers that we would recommend from Shikshangan. And in today's episode, we are taking three that we haven't touched upon so far, the tree diagram, also known as the hierarchy chart, the classification chart, also the flow chart, which is also known as the process chart, as well as the mind map. So let's begin with the first example that we have of a tree chart. I've taken the dynasty of Bhosle because I'm sitting here in Maharashtra and we're talking about Shahaji Raja Bhosle, it's a good idea to put pictures and dates and show the family tree. So a tree diagram, also known as a hierarchy chart, is basically useful for any kind of taxonomies. Though I have chosen something from history, you could do it very effectively for the animal kingdom, the vertebrates, invertebrates, probably in chemistry for acids, bases and salts, for geography in rocks and minerals, for literature about the kinds of poems and so on. It's limitless. It is a map which is showing a hierarchy or a taxonomy. So it continues this way where you show the siblings, his wife, Soira Bai, Sai Bai, and wherever possible you put in the pictures. What is the advantage? You see the whole picture pictorially along with dates, especially when it's history, it becomes easier to remember the dates along with the pictures. So these are not events we are talking about like we did on the timeline. This is not even a process. We are simply showing a taxonomy in a family tree and you could do it for anything which has a family. That's why a flowchart is used. Sorry, a tree diagram is used. So it continues and you have all these toyans and all their life and sometimes you can put in very rare pictures which is very very useful for, for learning. Here's one more and this is civics and it's the Indian government and a lot of students may not know about the executive, maybe a lot of adults may not know and we think it's boring, but it's important to know that the executive has the union and the state and therefore the parliament and the state legislature. And of course, it continues with people who are holding the executive. So you have the president, prime minister, vice president, so on, where the union is concerned, and the governor, chief minister, state council of ministers, where the state is concerned. Now, it's important to put this down pictorially and wherever possible, also add the images. Of course, we have the judiciary, Supreme Court, High Court, and all the subordinate courts. You might be realizing that when we put it pictorially, the learning becomes so much easier. In continuation of the same flowchart, I am adding the parliament, which has today the Rajya Sabha and the Lok Sabha. And of course, it's nice to put in the pictures of our leaders today, Ramnanji Govind and Narendraji Modi. Similarly, of course, the picture of the Chief Justice, and you tell me who it is. Yes, it's Ramana. So when we put in the pictures, it becomes easy for us to recall, remember, and learning becomes deeper and forever. That was the first graphic organizer for this episode. I'm moving on to what is known as a flow chart. A flow chart is usually showing the flow of a process. Therefore, it maps very beautifully to any skill that we are trying to teach. Currently, I have taken the rock life cycle because I thought that I wanted to show you that even when it is a cycle, you need to show it through a process chart, also known as a flow chart. Otherwise, we identify a flow chart with just coding, computer programming, and so on. I'm beginning with the magma. It's a cycle, so I could have started anywhere, but let me begin at the center of the earth, hot, molten lava. I'm not teaching geography. I'm just trying to show you how a circular flowchart could be done. So when it cools, it becomes igneous rock. And when it weathers and erodes, it becomes sediments. Okay? The interesting thing is with cementation and compaction, it confirms itself as sedimentary rock. You remember everything from this, from your childhood. Okay? Even if you're not a geography teacher, we're trying to see how a flowchart works. 
Now, it, through heat and pressure, it converts into metamorphic rock and it melts and goes back as magma, which is why it is a cycle. So the water cycle, Jala Chakra, the butterfly life cycle, a plant life cycle, life cycle of a seed, everything could be shown through a flow chart. Also experiments that you might do, recipes that you might want to share, there is a process to it and that is why it is called a flow chart. I am showing you this, although a flow chart has a specific uh, geometrical representation, starts with an oval, whenever it's a yes or a no, it becomes a diamond, continues in rectangles, as you must be aware when we are doing simple prosart, uh, flow charts to show a process. Now this is interesting because all the arrows point to constant activity. So a flow chart is showing activities in a process. This can again melt and become magma and by heat and pressure become actually metamorphic and this can convert to sediments and it goes on. That is the beauty of showing a flow chart. Let me show you the last graphic organizer of this episode, the versatile mind map also known as a bubble chart. So this is very versatile and can be used in any subject really. At the center, you put the big idea. I've taken our beautiful planet Earth. There is no other planet as beautiful as this one. And around it, all the ideas and subparts of whatever we might want to learn. So I'm speaking about the magnetic field. I can also talk about the age of the Earth, the diameter of the Earth. How many moons does it have? Once in a blue moon, as we know. You can even put an, put in English phrases there. The atmosphere composition, uh, the shape of the earth. So when you're putting in the pictures, the learning becomes easier. Retention is for longer. Recall is forever. The tilt of the axis of this earth and the rotation, of course. And lastly, how far is it from the sun? Are we very far away from it? The sun is burning itself to give us life. Okay. So how far away are we from there? Now, any central idea which you want to put, if you want to put a poem, a, po a poet and his work, an author, his work, an emperor, his kingdom, probably, you know, what, what are acids and around it, everything about acids, mammals, everything around it about mammals. So it is versatile, lends itself to every subject. This is what we wanted to show you through this episodes on graphic organizers. If you've liked what we've been presenting to you in easy, simple ways, do like and subscribe to our channel and tap the button on like so that you get constant update, updates from us. Signing off, this is Devika Nadek for Shikshangan Education Initiatives. Thank you for watching.